And then we also constantly need to talk about ways of building unity. There used to be a municipal body of all the municipal unions in this city that would plan together what they're going to do for their um, negotiation session that year. What happened to that? Why did that disappear? Why is it, and what's left of it, you might as well say that it doesn't exist anymore. Because another tactic is divide and conquer, whether it's using racism or whether it's saying, here, uniform workers, mostly white men, here, let me give you, I'm gonna give you two cents more, and you're doing better because they're only getting a nickel. So you just try to look at what tactics they use to divide people, and you have to go, because in every union, in every workplace, there are people that are questioning things. There are people who either come with some history of struggle or want to be engaged and are beginning to see that this is not working and there has to be an alternative. We have to find those people by engaging and struggle where we are and then trying to, those of us who have links and connection with other workers, other places, the May 1st Coalition as an example, the international workers, one of the dynamic things of those two places is that when we all come together, we see our commonality. We don't look at our differences as much as we look at what do we have in common, and mainly it's the enemy <laughs> that's here leading this country to madness and the rest of the world. So we have to build more of those. And we have to take the literature. We could start with the literature that they put out here. Why don't we take it to a different level? We could start with the white papers that they have here in DC 37, but why don't we take it to a different level? Not just describing all the contracting out. Let's, let's enrage people. Let's talk about how much money people get when they contract and who those companies are. Let's expose them. Let's put them on warning sign. You're not getting your raise because this person over here got this money for that, what was it called, the time system that they got, which, which Bloomberg's relative was involved in. Let's talk about Ratna, the reason why TWU doesn't have money. If you can give somebody a lease for nothing, you have property and you give a rich person the lease for nothing. They've been doing that for decades. They've been doing that for hundreds of years. The railroads were built on rich people getting favors like that. So we need to take this because this is truthful, but it ain't making nobody too angry. And furthermore, not too many people even read the white pages. Not too many people, I got this in the mail. You know, I looked at it, I said, okay, and I threw it down. Thank you. So I'm just saying that we have to produce the literature that's going to not only enrage, inspire, organize, and empower people to do what they have the ability to do. And we have it. We're just not using it. And there are reasons why, because people don't want us to use it. And if you're in leadership, and you have your foot on the neck of your workers, and they're getting screwed at the table, you need to be moved out, and somebody else needs to be put there coming from the rank and file, because that's another problem. The leadership no longer, for the most part, are people who actually work doing the work of the unions that they represent. I mean, even the garment workers, for example, I mean, it was mainly always a woman's uh, uh, type of union, but when did they have a woman leading it? You know, a Lillian is the first woman to represent DC 37, as in the majority of the people are women. Uh, you can go around the country and look at who's actually leading who. I mean, you have, uh, what's the brother's name um, that's over 32 BJ? And he, you know, did he ever work in that position? We have my, my old union, DC 1707. We have Raglan George. He never worked in our union at all in any place. And he represented daycare, home health aides. And, and, and social service workers. He never did any of that kind of work. The lowest paid workers, and all of them, 99% of them were women. We sat around the executive table, everybody was a woman. And here's this man there who got to be the executive director. Those are things that we have to begin to raise on, and not raise it up in a petty way that I want to run and have a slate so I can be in power. No, you raise them up in terms of what are the issues, who's the best fighter to fight for those things, and how do we collectively build that kind. TWU is a wonderful example because in 15 years they captured every single department before they ran for office. Every single, that's not only important in running for office, but it's important in organizing and going on strike. It's important in getting information out and handling grievances. That's the kind of structure you have to build within a union, but that's the kind of structure you have to build in a community <laughs> and in non-unionized places. 
Black Workers for Justice operates in the South. Most unions are, that don't exist down there. What did they do? They organized workers' committees within workplaces that did not have unions, and they acted like unions. They went to the bosses just like if it was TWU and said, we're handling this grievance. You did this to this person? We want this. We want that. They organized because they got a sense of their power that they could do it, that they could and should do it. And so that's what we have to encourage people. We have to inspire people. So these, are, these things are nice that we have every year, but they need to be in the community and in the workplace. This kind of discussion needs to be in the workplace. So if you have a newspaper or you have a pamphlet, you have something, you should be having discussions with people in the workplace about what do these pamphlets say? What does that book say? What do you think about it? How does that impact your life today? What can you do to change things? We have to pose these questions to people because no one asks them those questions. Nobody thinks that they're supposed to be asked those questions. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs>